Yeah, that's one of the things. That since I, last we did the program with you, that they're now streaming. Yeah. They're programming as right. it's aired. So maybe if we could put it together, you could let somebody in Pakistan know. Right. They could try and see it. Yes. Maybe part of the family or something. Mm. In Lahore, mostly. Right. right. Yeah. But we got to try and understand that uh, part of the world. Please work. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Very much to Conversations, where it's a pleasure to welcome to the program uh, Captain Shaheen Butt, and he's the director of the Kashmir Center USA. We want to talk about that part of the world. There's so much in the news now on uh, January 3 of the year 2002. Uh, and Shaheen Butt, welcome really very, very much to Conversations and Manhattan Network. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that that I have been given an opportunity on your program to speak about Kashmir. Well, it's a great opportunity for us to learn because, uh, unfortunately, um, I paid some attention to it, but I know the general, and I have some understanding of very rudimentary, preliminary understanding, but the American population doesn't understand it nearly as well as they should. We want to try and help fill that void if we possibly can. I'll do my best. Maybe you could share with us, maybe we could start, there's a great deal to talk about in terms of the recent events after 9-11 and so forth, what's going on in your, your western flank, as it were, uh, in Afghanistan and so forth. But I wonder maybe you could share, just weave it in a little bit with your own background, and then uh, we want to talk about Kashmir, and it is Kashmir that has been the uh, bone of contention between India and Pakistan since Partition, partition, and it's an important. Uh, it's important to understand the 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 background to that because it's so much in the news now. As uh, there's discussion about uh, mobilization on the part of India and so forth up on your, but but maybe you could share a little of your own background and then the unique situation of Kashmir uh, that it's good for us here in the United States to understand better than what we've been able to with what the news has been able to bring up to now. I would submit. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I come from. Sirinagar, Kashmir, occupied Kashmir. Mm -hmm. This is the part which is occupied by Indian uh, army. And uh, my family migrated from Kashmir about uh, good about uh, 70 years back. Uh -huh. And I was born in Lahore. I served in Pakistan army for about 10 years. And then I came to America and for the last uh, 22 years I'm settled in America. Yes. Uh -huh. And I'm running my business here and mm -hmm. taking care of uh, uh, Kashmir uh, Information Center USA. Mm -hmm. I'm the executive director of Kashmir Information Center. That is my primary uh, uh, activities other than my own business. Mm -hmm. And I take care of uh, uh, this office uh, in terms of uh, updating and informing uh, all the concerned people in America regarding what is happening in Kashmir, uh, occupied Kashmir and um, uh, in State Department and mm -hmm. the Office of UN and missions and all of those concerned people and let them know uh, what actually is happening uh, in Kashmir. Yeah, you will let them know, if we may, we will just say, uh, uh, you will let them know from the standpoint of uh, somebody who is in Pakistan, uh, the, your view of what it is that's going on in Kashmir, because we would get a different report from Delhi, wouldn't we, in terms well, of I, uh, that we should understand uh, that, but it's still fair to say that we should get an understanding of it from the standpoint of the people who represent the people, the, the majority of the people who live in Kashmir itself, and you would be representative of them perhaps more than the occupying forces that India has placed up in that province. Well, I, I understand that, that mm -hmm. there is a view from, from coming from Pakistan also, and Pakistan is a part of the whole dispute. Yeah. We cannot ignore that. Yeah, uh -huh. But as I'm concerned, I'm basically a Kashmiri myself, okay, yeah. and I look at it Kashmir uh, as a Kashmiri Pakistani, uh, and my views are about Kashmir not only uh, coming from Pakistan point of view. I, I, I'm much more concerned about uh, humans, uh, beings living in Kashmir, yes, and what is happening to them. Yeah, right. So therefore, my point of view is, uh, to quite an extent, uh, unbiased as far as. Uh, the situation in Kashmir is concerned. Okay, fill us in on Kashmir. What is it about Kashmir that has caused such uh, contention, and what's the historical background of the? Well, the Kashmir, two? as you know, they mm. call it paradise on earth, turned to hell. I know they've said that. And yeah. uh, it's very unfortunate uh, that what happened was in 1947, when English uh, got, uh, they left uh, subcontinent, and they. The subdivision uh, took place between mm -hmm. Pakistan and India. Uh, it's it's a lengthy uh, uh, subject, but I will go into only those details which are concerning Kashmir. Mm -hmm. At that time, 
it was decided that all those areas mm -hmm. which are predominantly Muslims should go to Pakistan and all those areas which are not should become part of India. Yeah, and it's fair to say that we had, uh, after the Raj, we had India and there were, Pac there were Muslims, there were Hindu, and the Pakistan was formed as a state with Mr. Muslim. Jinnah and so forth uh, to, for the Muslim population. There's still a great Muslim population in India itself. So right, we have right. to keep that in mind. But that was a division that was done, and it was very disruptive. At well, the this time. division was basically, honestly, at that time, at that time, it was done basically because of the differences in way of living of these two uh, nations. There was Muslims and Hindus, mm -hmm. and it was hard for them to live together. Uh -huh. And they decided that why shouldn't we live separately? Mm -hmm. And therefore, at that time, there had to be a formula designed to separate. And this was the formula that all those areas, which are, as I said, predominantly Muslim, have populated, mm -hmm. they should become part of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. At that time, there were about 600 princely states. 600? 600. And these had real meaning? Yes. At a, at a local level. It's important to understand that. Right. It's not as though... And those states were separately, independently, kind of semi-independently, uh, ruled by, right. by, by rajas and maharajas and all those. That's right. And the and the repre the national identity, to a certain sense, really was vested in those local uh, those local allegiances. Exactly. More than we might understand, because we think so easily. The United States of America, we got all kinds of people. Right. Great number of people, but those local identities were really very powerful and important. Exactly. On both sides. Of both the sides. And unfortunately, Kashmir was another state, and this state was about ninety. 5% Muslim population, mm -hmm. but was ruled by a Hindu Raja. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And Hindu Raja at that time conspired with India, and they signed a phony document of accession to India, mm -hmm. and which was, of course, not accepted by the people of Kashmir even at that time. 95% Hindu, I yeah, mean 95 Muslim. Muslims. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even at that time, we had a lot of restless and a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a fight uh, between uh, people of Kashmir and, of course, Indian soldiers. And because of that process, if you remember, about 40% of Kashmir was liberated mm -hmm. from India. That's what they call Azad Kashmir. That's what we call Azad Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And that became uh, a semi-part of Pakistan because it has its own identity. They have their own prime minister. They have their own legislature, their own... Uh, system. So, the rest of the 60% remained with India. And during that uh, time, when uh, if things had continued the way they were going on, maybe the whole Kashmir would have been liberated, India came to UN. Mm -hmm. It was initiated by India, and they came to General Assembly and they said, hold on one second, we are in a problem and we need to resolve this. Now, what was their position as relating to that? India's position was that that uh, that that document signed by the Ra, Ra, the Maharaja was valid uh, proof of their having claimed there. What was their claim to the area well, when it would, had been clearly understood that the parts that were Hindu would be India, the parts that were Muslim would be, and that would be surf on the surface of it obvious. What was their claim to that area? Well, their claim was because Hindu Raja is the is the owner. I mean, they, they, this is the kind of word they will use at that time mm -hmm. because he had bought this this piece of land, which was not a small piece of land, yeah, that's really it was 86,000 square miles yeah, that's right. and about, uh, f about 15 uh, million people, mm -hmm. and he had bought it for about uh, $26,000. Oh, that's wow, that's a good buy. That's better <laughs> than Manhattan. Eh? Exactly. Mm. And uh, he had used this to his benefit, mm -hmm. and he had, which of course, according to the formula that which was designed in partition, it was wrong because it was said that... Uh, the Oz area, which are populated by Muslim, it was mm -hmm. never said that it is to be decided by the Raja or mm -hmm. the chief of the of the of the state. And that's Bec the formula that had been agreed to at partition. Exactly, because yeah. because if it was to be decided by the chief, mm -hmm. then we had other few other states, which were ruled by Muslim Rajas, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but they were not populated by Hindus, mm -hmm. and they didn't come to Pakistan. They mm -hmm. stayed in India, like mm -hmm. Hyderabad and Dakin. Uh -huh. Okay. So yeah. my point is that we had, uh, we had unfair uh, terms and conditions being ruled all over. Mm -hmm. uh, in, as far as Kashmir is concerned, uh, India uh, intervened and in their track they said, no, this is, we have a paper, a section signed by the Raja at that time. 
And anyway, mm. by force, uh, Muslim soldiers, they fought with the Indian Army mm -hmm. and they got, as I said, 40% of it liberated. At that time, India came to UN and they said, we want to put a stop to the, this war. So and India to came to UN to put a stop to the war right. of liberation that was being waged by people from Azad Kashmir, Azad Kashmir. And that they were, and were the power relationships? Because unfortunately, uh, power might makes right in many right. people's mind and historically. So the power relationships between the two countries was one of overwhelming power to the other, or was there equality between those things? And that's something we ought to keep in mind in terms of the present situation, too, I would submit. You, know? you see, basically at that time, it wasn't a war between Pakistan and India. I wouldn't say that. Okay. It was a war between people of Kashmir at that time, mm -hmm. and of course, Indian forces who were oc occupying that area. That's interesting, yeah. So and the Kashmiri nation, as it were, goes exactly. back thousands of years. That's it's right. It's a very ancient, rich tradition on the Silk Route and that sort of thing, I think. Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. So uh, we, we had in 1947 and 48 we had a few resolutions passed at that time. and At the UN? At the UN. And the resolution passed that, uh, uh, which was agreed by India, Pakistan, and of course it was endorsed by five big countries at that time, America, uh -huh. British, uh, Russia, and China. And the U.S. And the U.S. And it called for a ceasefire? A ceasefire. Yeah. And they and said, we how was it going to be resolved? It was going to be a self-determination, the plebiscite. Mm -hmm. And the plebiscite was promised to the people of Kashmir that at a certain time, uh, in the near future at that time, mm -hmm. we'll have a plebiscite and we'll let people of Kashmir decide about their future, whether they want to join Pakistan or India. Uh -huh. There was no choice about them becoming independent. No, at that time there was no choice because at that time it wasn't feasible. It wasn't feasible. It wasn't mm -hmm. required. It mm -hmm. was not deemed necessary. Okay, but we're talking about a Kashmiri people who happen to be Muslim by and large, and so in that. And, and India uh, agreed to those terms that the, U in, the U.N. India was one of the signatories. They were signatory to yes, that. Yes, India was okay. signatories to that. Mm -hmm. And not only India was signatories. Even after that, the Prime Minister at that time uh, of India, mm -hmm. uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, mm -hmm. many times endorsed it, and it is on record that the decision about the fate of Kashmiris will be decided by the people of Kashmir. In and a plebiscite, to plebiscite. decide whether they want to go to India or to Pakistan. 95% right. uh, Muslim, more than likely, they would want to go to Pakistan, right. one would assume, right? right? Like that. So what happened? Uh, that was not... Uh, but this promise was never fulfilled. Why? Neither. Why? Because uh, India uh, was, uh, as a government, uh, was dishonest to this commitment and they didn't want to uh, really honor this commitment because if they honor this commitment, they have a fear that they will lose Kashmir and Kashmir will go to Pakistan, mm -hmm. number one. And then because in India there are a lot of other small states, Assam, Assam and uh, Tamil and all those kind of things, and they think that if this starts they might lose some of the princely states also. Right. Would that have been part of the thinking of the people in the Indian Union right from the beginning? And if they had thought that way, what would have prompted them to sign that uh, that UN resolution that there would be a plebiscite that would open the way to that in the first place? Well, at that time, that was to stop the war. Otherwise, if they had not signed it, they would have lost it anyway. So Pakistan was well on their way toward establishing a, a link with the Muslim people in Kashmir. That's and right. And they wanted to head that off. Right. And at that time, that was the best solution for them, and they wanted to. Uh, be, and that, in fact, at the point, the point, uh, all uh, s superpower and all strong countries of the world and international uh, countries, they all wanted a plebiscite. Mm -hmm. And India could not uh, deny that mm -hmm. right to those people of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. But uh, subsequently they felt they could and have to, in the name of holding the union together like Abraham Lincoln would have done with the United States when the Confederate wanted to, you know, they would see it that way. Right. And they're worried about if one state goes, another might, it would be the dissolution of the union, particularly given the fact that there are these local identities that people ascribe to. So there's this sub-national longings on the part of a lot of people and they want to avoid the falling apart of the Indian Union, and that's a geopolitical or a political thing that they must keep in mind. Uh, try to I, I it think this is this is the I think this is the this is the scare they have mm -hmm. most likely. Though I, in my personal opinion, I think uh, this is wrong. If they settle Kashmir situation once for all, maybe they have peace in the area and mm -hmm. Pakistan. And we can live with India as, as, a, as a good neighboring country, and uh, we will have less problems. Kashmir is the overriding problem 
it, geopolitically in that part of the world, is it not? That's right. I mean, Assam is there and so forth, but yes. Kashmir is overriding. Fought two wars over this issue? Three wars. Three wars over and this and issue. And if you include Kargil War, the, another one. Cargo uh, War, a couple years the ago, one. there was that. It was actually uh, before. As a matter of fact, I honestly tell you, a small little exchange of fire is always there. Even always there. Even as we are talking, yeah. we have exchange of fire there. It's an ongoing hot spot. How does India answer the charge, if the charge is made, that there's supposed to be a plebiscite? Look, here's resolution, whatever it is, 150, whatever they are, and everything. There's supposed to be a plebiscite. They've got occupying forces in Srinagar, the Vale, and that sort of thing. What is their uh, rationale for not um, carrying through on those who would try to implement those, pleb those, those agreements? And wh what is the implication of... Uh, the UN being a place to which we can begin to get out of the strictly might make right view of international relations. It's a, it's a discrediting the power or the ability of the UN to be an intervening, intervening agency right. to settle, you know, uh, deadly conflicts between states. And maybe you could address a couple of those issues. Well, honestly, the only thing uh, they have, uh, the only excuse they have on this is that this, uh, this legislation was passed and it's too old. So in other words, in, in the, their theory, it doesn't, since it doesn't suit them, they have an excuse that it was, this resolution passed in 1947, yes. and they assume or they want people to assume that things are changed now. But the point is, we don't see things changing, things changing to the worst. If we had seen peace in Kashmir, if we had seen Kashmir uh, very friendly and homogeneously working with Indian at this time, and then if they had this excuse, though I think any resolution which is not passed and it is old doesn't mean that it has to be kind of put aside. Yeah, right. A resolution which is passed is to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we all, all these countries who are signatory to this resolution, mm -hmm. including UN and including India, they should be embarrassed that they, they took so long and they have not done anything about including it. Including the United States of including America. United States and of should America. not the United States of America perhaps be Def embarrassed not to be on the side of implementing this That's right. This plebiscite. Uh, in the name of democracy. Democracy. Mm. And Mr. Chairman, uh, you would, it, it is amazing to know this is one of the first resolutions on the agenda of UN which are not implemented. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of others, yeah. but if you, if you go into the history of resolutions which are not implemented and put in a, a cold storage, it, mm -hmm. this is one of those first yeah. ones. Yeah. And those resolutions are done in good conscience or in good thinking to stave off violence, perhaps right. in many cases and so forth and then are just uh, not, are, are overlooked by the nations going back to the old might makes right, a man on the ground with a gun in his hand kind of concept of uh, international relations. Right. And that is, that is unfortunate because it's that which we would want to um, avoid. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. You see, the, the and what has been the ongoing history? You've had these wars and so forth? Well, we had, we, had, we had wars and uh, uh, from last, uh, 13 years, uh, I think from 1989, we had an indigenous uprising in Kashmir. Since and 1989? You, yes. And you have... Prior to that, had there been... Uh, but prior to that, we, we had two wars. Because the wars that had been with India had been largely over Kashmir, or were there other issues that were particularly I important? Think but Kashmir's been the particular sticking point between... I think the countries. only issue... You always have issues with the neighboring countries. Of course. But you resolve oh. them. It is daily things, water issue and other things. But the only issue which has uh, brought us to a few wars is Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And I think there's no doubt, doubt about it. Everybody knows about it. So what you say in 89 there was a movement, but was there not also, was there not movements among the people in Kashmir or because they were being occupied by, from their perspective, well, they had a been Hindu occupying force? And had there not been resentments uh, voiced and so forth during from the 1950s on up to well, the there have been there have been many resentments mm -hmm. at many times at many times Indian forces have killed a lot of people but you see when media came in people got educated even people of Kashmir they got educated they knew that this is an era of freedom everybody in the world is getting freedom they saw what happened in in the Berlin Wall joining together That's and, right, and yeah. then they said what has happened in Kosovo, Kosovo and all other countries you know so Indian uh, people in Kashmir they thought how come we are not being given the right of self-determination? The Indian which? Muslim people in Kashmir yes. began to start thinking about their own interests and they would re they, they, and then they, they would say there should be a plebiscite I mean had they been uh, uh, invoking these UN agreements that have been made early on 
and so forth during yes. that intervening period? Because you said 1989, did you say that there was a movement that rally began? Well, to get 1989, it was, it was a very organized movement within, within Kashmiri people. They, they, they kind of, it was a political movement. They make a, a big, huge body of uh, uh, Hurriyat, and they, they had like what, 23 different parties. Mm -hmm. They joined together, mm -hmm. and they're still together. Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is that India is trying their best to break those people. Against uh, Indian occupation? Uh, against Indian occupation. And would they be saying we should have a plebiscite to decide our own fate? Exactly. I mean, they have differences, but they are united on one point that we need plebiscite. And we don't want Indian occupation? And we don't want Indian occupation. Is that true? Yeah. OK. Yes. Now, there have been reactions on the part of the Indian forces. And there have been human rights violations that are Men. horrendous, horrendous, from what I understand. That's right. And that this is part of the pattern that should be understood, no, by the American people as we look at I what's think, going I on think it, before it, it, it our is eyes. again, I would say, in this modern age, it is again a shame for, for the whole humanity in the world, as a matter of fact. And all nations who see all these things and turn their eyes away, and what is happening in Kashmir, the way p the women uh, in Kashmir are being raped, Mm -hmm. The soldiers going and burning the houses and going and t kidnapping children and, and killing them in front of their parents. We have photographs and we have uh, proofs and they have been shown on international media. Uh, India is so... We, have, we had a tape that we didn't have available. We could show on another occasion uh, the right. killing fields of killing field Kashmir, of Kashmir right. where there where it documents this kind of thing in horrendous detail. Uh, maybe on another occasion we'll show... Amnesty International has quoted many times all the violations and human rights uh, violations being taken place in Kashmir. And uh, they have uh, made it a point. But the point is... It's like uh, ethnic cleansing? That's right. Is that what it would be? That, that. And w could it be called? I, d I don't want to put words in the mouth of, of the city, but it would be, in a certain sense, uh, I, um, something on the order of like, um, we're going to get to a word that we're going to use. It's like a sort of state-sponsored terrorism Definitely, delivered yeah, down upon the population of uh, Kashmir, Srinagar, and so forth that, by right. the Indian forces. They had an army as much as 600,000. A little, little more than that army. now. More than 600 that. 600 is like a few months back figure, but right now it's about 700. That's over uh, a long period of time, an yes. occupying force against a recalcitrant uh, or a unified population that is against their occupying okay. forces. And that's been ongoing uh, for a long period of time. That's right. Mr. Channer, I mean, India has been saying for a long time that Kashmir is their integral part, and it is part of India. And they're ignoring the UN resolution. Ignoring everything. But mm -hmm. the funny thing is that if it is their part of their India, how come they have San Ramana pe people, soldiers, imposed on them and killing them and burning their houses and kidnapping young people and then taking them away and they never come back. Has the population changed? Has there been more Indians of a Vedic persuasion or of a Hindu persuasion or more, uh, you know, it's to where you said there were 95 percent that were Muslim at the time of uh, partition? Has that changed at all? The demographics changed? Have they no, been demographic, in there? No, they demographic, tried, they tried to change, mm -hmm. but they could not because Kashmiris, they were very strong people mm -hmm. and they don't want to move from there. India has been trying their level best to push them away from there mm -hmm. in, in any many way means. But those people, they, they have, it's a nation. Kashmir is not. It is a nation. It's a nation. S separate language? Yes. Individual language? Individual language, individual religion, individual customs. Deep historical. Deep language. historical uh, uh, nation. Mm -hmm. And they're proud of their, their own identity and they don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. They will never like to leave the place no matter what. They have been paying prices for the last 52 years. And for the last 13 years, they have been paying terrible kind of prices, but they're ready to do that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to leave that place. Is there a movement that's growing for independence of Kashmir, apart from only the choice of a plebiscite between India and Pakistan, uh, that there are people who say we should have uh, another nation uh, in the flags at, before the United Nations, or is that what? Well, I tell you honestly, India has always tried to confuse the issue of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Rather than resolving it, it is in better interest of India to confuse it. And this is another uh, effort on the part of India to confuse it by inducing people, uh, a segment of people who really want uh, independent Kashmir. Mm -hmm. The point is, uh, at this point, I would not like to talk about anything against those people who, are, who want independent Kashmir because they have a right to their opinion. Mm -hmm. And we respect that. But the point is, 
That is why we say, why don't we have clubs in it, ask people what they want. And India, if India is so sure about it that those people want to stay with India or they want to have an independent Kashmir, let's have clubs in and you'll do find the, out. Does Indi do India in their diplomatic statements and so forth or press statements say that they are of the opinion that the people of Kashmir want to stay with India? Do they try and present oh, that? Yes, as what always. Is really the case, and they're just being hoodwinked by these. Other always, they, they think that Indian uh, Kashmiri people have participated in a few elections. Have they ever had any elections that were had any validity? They had few f phony elections, and uh, <laughs> the turnout was shameful. But they just got people elected, and uh, initially, and, and that is what they were excusing, f uh, using an excuse for people that since people of Kashmir has participated into uh, election, but but mind you. For the last about 15 years, there have not been no election. Mm -hmm. Last 15 years, yeah. no, no elections. No election. Or though though like America, uh, India has been trying to hold a proper election, general election, but mm -hmm. they, but they know that they cannot have no elections. Mm -hmm. you know. And they have these huge occupying forces. They have the self-imposed uh, puppet uh, chief minister of uh, Kashmir, uh, uh, Abdullah, who is not, who doesn't have the guts and who doesn't have the courage. If he's the representative, true representative of uh, Kashmiri people, mm -hmm. he cannot go and walk into the street of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. He's hiding in, in his palace. Because he's un, uh, un, uh, unpopular, mm -hmm. to put it mildly, right? Yes. And, and they've had lockdowns. Unwanted. They've even disallowed that journalists could go there in order to report on the conditions? They have. If I understand right. It, International have, journalists can't go there? No, you cannot go there. They mm -hmm. have locked. They give you an excuse that this is the security for, uh, of uh, in, uh, this journalist and they don't yeah. want to let them go. Mm -hmm. But no journalist can go there. Uh, we do get our information through uh, local people, whatever information we get. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, no journalist from anywhere from the world can go and, and find out what is going on there. Okay, and this is the background. You fought You fought in 71, I think, or there was that war? No, that before that, we were fought in 47, we fought in 48. We fought in 65. Over Kashmir. Over Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And then we fought in 71. Yeah, and that and was also Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Yeah, development, yes. that kind of thing. And then it, uh, it's ongoing. And now that's what is the background behind what is so much in the news now, as we right. talk in the year 2002. And then these other developments, maybe we could really try to take that into account because there's been this whole world has been turned upside down since 9-11 yeah. uh, here and that uh, you've got the Al-Qaeda and you've got the Taliban, you've got the Pashtuns, you've got the whole thing in Afghanistan which in a certain sense is on your western flank. You've got on the eastern flank, you've got India, on the western flank you've got uh, you know the, uh, the situation in Afghanistan and you've got the history of Pakistan in that Afghan fighting against the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. It is a tremendous amount of pressure that one would submit that's being put upon the, the leadership of Pakistan at that's this right. particular time. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit, the situation that's there. And then we also want to get it down because there's so much on the lips of so many people now, this notion of terrorism. And they're going to try, if I'm not mistaken, the Indians will try and uh, put the, the, the uh, use advantage of the, the terrorist uh, language to put it upon the uh, Mujahideen or others that would be fighting for what would be seen as a freedom fighter struggle in Kashmir and has right. been going on for decades. And we want to put some of these things in perspective. Maybe you could talk to some of those things uh, here Mr. in the first General, days this, of 2002. This uh, sad incident of September 11, of course, is uh, one thing which I think has been condemned and by all nations and all religions. And I think nobody in right state of mind would ever endorse this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is something which is not acceptable, which is not likable, and which no, nobody would respond to this kind of things. Though at this time, all those forces who are against Muslims, including India, they have tried to blame Muslims. And I, as, a, as a Muslim, I, uh, I'm not a religious scholar, but I, what I read about religion, I know, mm -hmm. I have never learned anywhere that my religion should teach me to terrorize people. Mm -hmm. That's not my religion teach, teaches me peace. Mm -hmm. that's okay. The, that, well, all right. That's yeah. that's the real significance of my uh, the name Islam. Mm -hmm. Peace. Mm -hmm. And we all condemn whatever whosoever done is this. First, as far as we are concerned, as a Pakistani, as a Kashmiri, we think somebody who did that, whosoever did that, he's the biggest enemy to Pakistan. Muslims and mm -hmm. Kashmiris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Islam, because we all Muslims are being looked down upon in the world, 
because of this incident. Yeah, I it know. Been, it's, been blamed it's a real problem, yeah. Pakistan, because Pakistan is the country which is right in the middle of the whole situation. The whole... And Kashmir, because Pakistan is fighting, helping out Kashmiri freedom fighters, which was a legit freedom f movement, and now India is taking advantage of this whole situation and turning this freedom uh, movement into mm -hmm. a terrorism movement. Yeah, well, they were trying to, people are trying to do that all over the world. All over the world. Yeah, and, they're and, trying and, to and say, my enemy is a terrorist. Terrorist. And jump on the bandwagon in a certain sense. And it's something that has to be really kept in and, mind. And yeah. I tell you that this is such a sad thing. I mean, and I, and I appreciate if uh, people in USA, they understand this thing, that we have to maybe define terrorism in the real sense. The UN has not been able to come up with a definition of terrorism. They don't. They, 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 they tried to do it and they couldn't get agreement and part of the problem was uh, South Africa because they, uh, they, they tried to say Nelson Mandela was a terrorist and they couldn't differentiate between legitimate anti-colonial or other kind of freedom struggles it has been the mark of the world since right. the, sec the second war and so right. forth. That struggle against the injustice right. and, the, uh, and colonial holdovers and so forth of uh, submitting to power and then also in a larger historical sense to the notion that uh, might makes right only mm -hmm. and that the evolving the efforts of some to try and evolve international law and international conflict resolution processes and so forth that the UN is one hope for and that that's a very important principle that be, has to be kept in mind as well. That's right and, and UN unfortunately uh, is quiet on this, mm -hmm. which is a very sad thing again. And all these people in South Asia, and particularly Muslims in that area, we are looking at. I mean, we don't know where to go, and yeah. we don't know how to, how to yeah. how to explain ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are trying to explain. We're trying you mean on to the Kashmir thing, or in on, on everything as well. All right. You see, okay. now mm -hmm. unfortunately, Kashmir movement is being related to to Mujahideens, to the terrorism. Yeah. Therefore, now we have to explain this that we are not terrorists, we are freedom fighters. Yeah, right. And we have a right. I mean, we're talking about our rights. Yeah, that the injustice is on the other side. Right. In a sense. And you, you've got how many people have been killed in Kashmir by uh, the Indian occupying forces? Tens of thousands? 75,000 people. 75,000 so have, 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 have been killed. 75,000 have been killed. Documented. Documented. Uh, it would be like somebody would have to go, if, if to make the point, you'd have to go back to uh, maybe uh, Nazi occupation in the Balkans or something like that in order to get the picture of what you're dealing with and then people trying to fight against the occupation of the Nazi forces. This would be from the Kashmiri or perhaps Pakistani side of seeing that sort of thing. Right. In order to try and get at the, the, the or France. I mean, right. and the people collaborating with them would be like Vichy or yes. something like that. Yes. And so, I mean, try to get that as part of the reality. Now, India would object to that view, I'm sure, right. as Nazi Germany would have objected right. to it as right. it was applied in the 40s. Right. But that's what you're getting at, is that there is injustice that exists in the status quo con context of might makes right and people being able to impose force. But that's something that ha there has to be pr uh, uh, provision made in international right. relations for there to be movements toward something on the order of justice and also in terms of a, a workable a workable economic order right. that, that can right. be that can be not plagued by constant uh, viol violence of oppressed people fighting against their oppressors. Mm -hmm. right? and, and and let's not forget, Mr. Chandler, in that particular area, it's now we have two atom atomic nuclear powers. Absolutely, Pakistan yeah. and India, and we Kashmiris don't want to be a cause of a nuclear conflict. It's a real hot spot, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we, we that is what scares us, mm -hmm. that in this conflict, maybe we are the losers. I mean, we might, we already lost 75,000 lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a terrible situation if, if, if UN or America or uh, all those uh, responsible democratic countries don't intervene and find out a way to it, I see a big problem there. Mm -hmm. I mean, problem is already there. I'd be a big disaster there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A and, and I hope uh, uh, in the name of humanity, mm -hmm. uh, all uh, international people, countries, and organizations should come out and help us on this. We had this attack on the, uh, you know, in Delhi a couple of weeks ago with the people with the rifles and that sort of thing, and Indians are reacting very strongly in that. Uh, there are reports, uh, although some deny it from the Indian side, that there's as many as a million troops massed on the border there. Uh, 
How do we? How do you? How do you see that? Or what? What you is see, the reality? India, India is, and we do want to talk about the. India the, is, uh, is recently reality. has been copying things from America. Yeah, uh, trying to I mean, jump on I, the bandwagon exactly. and trying to have America tilt toward India. India. In terms of the not only America, the whole Europe tilt the, towards the whole India. Europe tilt toward India. India. That's India. what they would have. Right. Say, we're the democracy, and you see, we had a big accident here of the 11 September. Mm -hmm. thing, which is not a thing to take any benefit out of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is something which to, to feel sad about it. Mm -hmm. It's a sad thing that we have lost so many lives. And the we United have States has, yeah. United States, I'm talking mm -hmm. about. When I say we, I'm... I'm, I'm well, I'm, Kashmiris have lost 70,000. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, a life is a life. Life is a life. Uh -huh. And the point is that uh, India is using this thing to, to, to their best benefit also. Others are as well, I think. Others as well. Yeah. And in Indian people, they're trying to... Or they're trying to. They're, yeah, they're trying to relate. And they, they, they're trying to create a similar situation in India. And by creating that after that, India is kind of dictating things, trying to dictate. Mm -hmm. In the same tone as America is talking to Afghanistan, India is trying to talk in the same tone to Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, right. That's right. And others will try and do that around the world. Particularly the people who have the upper hand militarily will try and say anyone who wants to change what's ready, what's there, the weaker parties right. trying to change it, are terrorists. And it'll even get into quasi just parliamentary things or or saying in a kind of word, uh, using certain words even, even language. And yes. everything could be. A but unfortunately, I think. India should know that uh, Pakistan is neither Afghanistan, neither India is America. Mm -hmm. Neither mm -hmm. Pakistan is Palestine, and India is not Israel. Mm -hmm. Pakistan is Pakistan, yeah. and India is India. Yeah. And we had fought few wars. And we've got problems all over the world now. You see, Argentina is melting down economically, yes. and we've got uh, problems in Colombia with Plan Colombia, and we've got, uh, pal uh, we got uh, fights out in the Philippines and in Indonesia and this sort of thing. And the President of the United States, if I may say so, has used language that has sounded, um, you know, you're either with us or against uh, us. Yes. And he's made, tried to draw a line between, you know, a very firm line and so forth that leaves a lot of room for some people to say, hey, we're going to make sure we're on the right side of that right. and make ourselves and then paint the other as a terrorist because it comes so trippingly off the tongue. And there's this billion dollar a month obligation on the part of the United States to fight this war in Afghanistan. Right. So that's all current, as right. it were. In right. the, so there are people in positions of power trying to take advantage of that to establish a status quo position for themselves rather than address wrongs that might be inherited in a situation in which they find themselves all over the world. Don't That's you think? right. That's yeah. right. And the status quo situation that's in place does not have the elemental kind of democratic justice that the system requires in order for it to be able to move ahead. It would be uh, stasis that would be done, and so they wouldn't be addressing the root causes of the problems that do exist in the world. Right. Or they would be closed off right. under that formula. It's a dangerous formula. I think it's about time we go, we got to find out the root cause of the problem. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be just putting on the bush. And it's all over the world. It's all over the world. Yeah. It's all over the world, and, and mm -hmm. unless we really find out, uh, rather than cornering any uh, ethnic uh, uh, communities or, or Arabs or Muslims or Pakistanis. Or even one man in a cave. Uh, or or one man in the cave. That's representing all that is evil. That's just a scapegoat. No? Yes. Because yes. there are existential challenges to the system that does exist. Right. And that's being seen in many, many quarters. You've got young people even just, uh, we're going to have Davos meet here in New York. You right. know? The Davos is going to meet in New York at the end of right. January. Right. And they, they played all kinds of havoc in um, Genoa, right. young people against the system that's in order. The eight, you know, the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. the way the right. uh, the debt to our nations and the and the terrible burden of debt that's brought down upon countries all around the world by the system that's in right. place mm -hmm. should be questioned rather than just accepted. That the system that's in place is not adequate to what the planet needs. Exactly. It's one of the contentions of a great number of people, and there's a danger that the powers that be will just say anyone who says there has to be a change like in a fiat way, we'll just say, well, you're a terrorist. Right. And so we will uh, suspend constitutional rights and so forth. And it's very dangerous. Right. And it seems that way to me as an American. Yes. And one of the hot spots and one of the possible groups that they would be, you know, riling against would be this Kashmir Kashmir. struggle. That's right. Mm. So it's better to understand it, perhaps yeah. in this broad context, too, yeah. also. And it's also undercutting the United Nations and the authority of international law, which is one of our hopes to have a, a world of law, don't you think? You know what, Mr. Chandler, I think uh, Mr. Bush, President of USA, and a lot of other 
people from State Department initially when we had this incident on 11 September. Mm -hmm. I remember categorically they said, look, these terrorists want to change our way of life. They cannot change. They mm -hmm. cannot win us. But I tell you that they have changed our way of life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where is that of freedom? Where is our civil rights? Mm -hmm. where, is, where is my, as a Muslim, where is my... Yeah, particularly for you, you must be feeling some of that. Sure. See, I don't have that. Sure. I'm a wasp. You right. know, I don't have that. But, you know, there, there's... There, there, it's if my name starts with Muhammad, uh, I'm being watched every... I'm, mm. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being forced to either change my name yeah, and there are or kind of duck in and hide. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think if... And as I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I've been here for 25 years. They wear the turbans, so yeah. they're in deep trouble. Even. They're in deep trouble, too, because, yeah, yeah. because they look like Osama. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, if that is happening, that means these terrorists, they have won. Mm, well, yeah. The, the, the they they did change your way of life. Yeah, that that was not American way of life. Yeah, and they're, and they're undercutting the civil liberties and that sort of thing exactly. all too much. And everything. I mean, America is known for civil liberties. The, yes, the, indeed. The first thing that comes when you talk of America is freedom and civil liberties. Well, we have an international, or a lot of people say, where there's a r what they call a race to the bottom, where there are people who, in the name of uh, comparative advantage, will go and exploit slave labor conditions in various parts of the world in order to work into the international, the international, you know, in the name of freedom, they'll do that, uh, of the market. In the, in the, uh, Argentina just went under, or nearly, they've imploded Argentina now because they had it tied to the dollar, the peso, and then they also, you know, they, uh, they, 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 the laissez-faire view of the world uh, that is uh, just almost like a fundamentalist kind of view of the world that politically is being exerted on the world mm -hmm. is something that really has to be questioned yeah. uh, if we're talking about the interests of the vast majority of the people of the world. So I mean, it's something that ought to be kept in I, mind. I, I, I think again, back to this thing about the international monetary and the debt. Pakistan is under tremendous pressure because of the debt oh, yes. that they have to the international uh, money Monitor, lenders yes. and so right. forth, right? I mean, maybe we could talk about that. That's part of the... Well, equation. as a matter of fact, Pakistan has been put under pressure for the last uh, decade, I would say. Decade, yeah. Decade, yes. Uh, it has always been there, but from the last decade it has been tremendous. I mean, a lot of things that Pakistan doesn't want to do, and it is... Uh, what we do is that IMF comes in, the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. and they say you won't get this loan unless you do this. Structural adjustment. Structural adjustment. Mm. No, and, and no money for education. No money for education. Mm -hmm. all right? No money for rebuilding uh, roads and communication mm -hmm. and transportation. Mm -hmm. And But they do want to give you a little bit, and they want to give you unless you do following things. Yeah, and they've got a formula in their mind. I don't think it worked very well in the Soviet Union. Right. You know, what they call shock therapy, and they're going to make everybody right. into a laissez-faire right. capitalist right overnight and everything. And it's worked disastrously yes. in the Soviet Union and other parts of the world, too. So the thing is that what they have in their mind that may, should be rethought, perhaps, in terms of even at the level of economic theory. Forcing Pakistan to, mm -hmm. through MF, IMF, not only sign, other sign, countries other around countries the world, well, the same to story. sign CTBT, let's say, mm -hmm. whereas America itself is, does, have not signed uh, uh, yes, right. yet. Yeah, well, that's I mean, again, might makes right, in yes. a sense, yeah. But America says, no, forget about us, you sign it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have this kind of attitudes, things are not comfortable. Backs out of the ABM, yes. just like that, uh, yes. no Kyoto, right. and this kind of thing going in a, in a course like that. And then that's the system that they would ask people to uh, almost in a... Uh, don't bother reading the fine print, just sign kind of tied on right. to their system. Uh, and if you question that, they're going to brand you as a terrorist. Terrorist. And this is a situation that is emerging in the world, and it seems to be gathering steam. And there's a great patriotism in the United States now where people wave the flag right. and everything because of the attack. And it's dangerous in a certain sense. Yes, it's and it relates it's to It relates to the situation as it relates to Kashmir, which is in the news as you and I talk now. Right forces massed at the border of India and Pakistan and India uh, insisting on uh, Mr. Musharraf uh, picking up uh, so-called terrorists in Pakistan, wanting them to, ha could he ever hand them over to India and survive politically? I or what is the pressure, well, the what is the political pressure that's going to be on him just with this, uh, this, stat this uh, attitude that India is all, exerting and the pressure they're exerting? You got it on both fronts now. First of all, we India and Pakistan, they don't have any treaty of extradition. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any treaty, there is no reason why... I was why just thinking politically, because that's yeah. an issue that resonates in the minds and souls of the Pakistani people with an intensity that Americans probably can't understand, right. that conflict with India, right? Right. Maybe you can and help shape... Uh, well, even, even Pakistan, the, 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 the latest thing that you're talking about, even Pakistan, as, as of today, I believe, the 
the president of Pakistan, he said, look, we have caught those people, we have caught them in uh, safe custody because we have no reason to arrest them. We have got them in safe custody. House you arrest? Like yes. Mm -hmm. You give us proof. <laughs> That's what you want proof and they just, just scoff at it. You give us proof and we will deal with them. If this is our country, these are our people. Why would we give it to you? Yeah. Why should and we they, give it and to they you? Just, and they just say, proof. Yes. We don't need proof. Yes. I mean, we don't need no stinking right. badges, this kind of attitude. It was the same thing when Pakistan asked for proof about Osama bin Laden. Right. And there's still lots of things in the internet and other places that you can't be absolutely sure that even he was the one, you know, because there's been doctoring of tapes and kind of things like that. Well, but you see, like, in case, in case yeah, of... You understand what I'm saying? Right, though? right. In case of Afghanistan and America, we can understand because we were a third country. Mm -hmm. We were not Afghanistan, we were Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. We could not demand too much because, I mean, it is between America and Afghanistan. Yeah, you got and we were just a neighboring country. You got the of richest, course, most powerful nation against the poorest, poor, most unpoor. Un you know, you, you, there's a kind of a disequilibrium of weight and influence and power that you had to be taking into account of right. the government then, yeah. But India and Pakistan, mm -hmm. we are two independent countries, mm -hmm. we're both nuclear, we're mm -hmm. both powerful. That's right. Not to and forget. India asking us that you give us 20 people because mm -hmm. we want them. Sight unseen, don't bother reading the print, don't bother about yes. proof. You need no proof. We know. Exactly. And do it. It's kind of... Uh, he got the reply today and, and, and the president said, look, we're not getting you no, giving you nobody. Mm -hmm. That's none of your business. I you can't see it. how he could. I mean, politically. No, he could not. He couldn't have done it. Given it's a murder. Because, or, or would, although we thought that if he were to take the line that he did with the United States, that they might, he might not survive. Great number of people, even in the case of Osama, there were a number of people who were in support, particularly up in the, you know, there. And there would have been a challenge to his government, which after all had been a military but, coup in itself but. and so forth, and that there was a danger of of that. So that's part of the equation. It's hard for us to understand, but the, the emotions of the people there and the feelings of the people there in other parts of the world perhaps are not exactly the same as that which courses through the brains and minds right. of the American citizens. Yeah. But you see, I think India, India knows that um, Pakistan is not going to hand over those people to them. But by using this on international media, India kind of portray to all people that Pakistan is another Afghanistan, yeah. like Osama is hiding, yeah, yeah, these yeah. guys are hiding. Yeah. So he's a, 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 a person. It's like PR. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Telling people that, you know, trying to portray it. And this has been, India has been trying for a long time. This isn't the first time India has done it. Uh -huh. India staged a drama of hijacking plane, you know that. No, I, I didn't realize that. Well, mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. few weeks back before, oh, India, yeah. uh, there was a plane which was hijacked and there was a big news Oh, the plane has been hijacked, and the, the terrorist is from Pakistan, and all that. And then suddenly they found out, no, no, no it was a mistake. It was uh -huh. not hijacked. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. at one time, the news came on CNN and everything. Uh -huh. Then when Clinton went to, President Clinton went to India, yeah. in Pakistan, uh -huh. if you remember, yeah. they staged a drama, and they killed 46 Sikhs hmm. with turban hmm. in, in Kashmir. Oh, wow. By killing that, they knew because president is here, this news is going to highlight. And who and did even, the killing? And who did the killing? Even the sixth said themselves that we know who did it. Indian Hindus did it. And um, is, it has, that been rec has that been admitted to? Yes. No? Uh, it, by the Indian authorities? I mean, authorities, no. they, they never admitted that, but, no. but people who are victims, mm -hmm. they said that we know who did that. And it was done as a PR thing in order exactly. to get the sentiment of the... United States government thinking in terms of the Pakistanis as terrorists. Terrorists. Uh -huh, yeah. So it has been done very many times. Uh, we have come all right so far, and I hope, inshallah, everything will be all right. But the point is, uh, we have to put a stop to this. Mm -hmm. This is getting too much out of yeah. hands. What is India's, uh, uh, what do you think is, you, we sh we're talking again, this is uh, uh, January 3, just getting started in the year 2002. What is their objective in taking this stance? I mean, they will say we are, just as the United States was taking very extraordinary ex uh, uh, steps in Afghanistan following 9-11, they say, well, our parliament was attacked with gunmen and so forth, and they're taking this extraordinary step. But what is their um, objective, do you think? Well, well, it's very clear. The objective is to, first of all, you know, I'll go a little f back. Th they have never even accepted Pakistan as a country. Uh, uh, okay. uh, 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 but to uh, talk of giving Kashmir to Pakistan or make, giving freedom to Kashmir, they have been trying to undo Pakistan, and, and the example is in front of you. In 1971, mm -hmm. they helped Bangladesh to come and to break Pakistan. Yeah. Now, the movement of Kashmir, freedom movement in Kashmir, which is an indigenous movement, mm -hmm. 
and it is from the people. They claim it's Pakistani backed with the IS. Uh, exactly, uh, because if they, if they, if they accept that it is indigenous, then, then people will say, what the hell are you doing? Why don't mm -hmm. you let them go? Mm -hmm. So they, for their face saving, they have to have an excuse. And the excuse mm -hmm. is, this is being they backed They present by, evidence of that and so forth? Or uh, they have never no evidence. Mm -hmm. So far, they have not been given any evidence. Well, if there's some listening, they could bring it out. You know, If somebody in the Indian mission listening, you might want to present some of that evidence. Oh, sure. Or if they have any evidence, they can bring it out. Right. Invite them to come and we could talk to them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, right. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So the purpose of, you, you, are, you had asked me a question, what was the purpose of doing all this? Mm -hmm. The purpose is that they want to pressurize Pakistan to an extent that Pakistan stops the political help that it is giving to Kashmiri people. They give help to the Kashmiri people sure. in their struggle, which they would. Sure, Understandably, a moral Kashmir support and help and that sort of thing, which is within a context that is recognized by the international community as legitimate and appropriate and so forth? Definitely, because okay. Pakistan is a part of the whole dispute. Mm -hmm. Pakistan is, we have we three, <coughs> three partners, Pakistan, Kashmiris, and India. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan cannot keep quiet. And Pakistan gives them political, uh, political help. No. The French gave us support, and George the Third called George Washington a terrorist. I remember that. Right. And also, or in the case of uh, apartheid, when there were anti-apartheid forces, uh, Mandela was mm -hmm. put under house arrest for 27 years. There was a there were people that supported that right. movement, right. and that's a legitimate thing for people to do. Right. Is to, or if you were to support the partisans or the the uh, liberation forces of de Gaulle against the Nazi occupiers, that was a legitimate thing, not, that's right. not an illegitimate thing. So that's the way of thinking right. that has to be kept open to, uh, since we do not live in a perfectly just world that the status quo presents right. for us, right? No, second object for them is that f soon after this, you will, you will see that they will start killing Kashmiris in Kashmir. You're going to see? And, and they will stay. Well, they, they, will, they will what? They will start killing more Kashmiris in. in, in uh, Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because they want to, the purpose is to keep them quiet and tell them to not ask for freedom. To, f well, that, to that, kill that, the freedom movement. That is a uh, form of state sponsored terrorism. terrorism. Exactly. Would that be your accusation of their sure. activities in, in the veil? Mm. Is state-sponsored terrorism on Definitely. the part of the Indian forces? You would accuse them of that. Definitely. But mm -hmm. they would say, listen, mm -hmm. we are killing terrorists. Mm -hmm. So by to, to do that... Well, they did. The Nazis yeah. called the, uh, the partisans in the Balkans terrorists. Right. You know, they did. And they, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So my, my point is... That's that just to keep it in mind. Not necessarily to say that is the case, but just to keep an open mind right. on things rather than just being pell-mell run along uh, the lines that a, a government, even ours perhaps, might want us to begin to think, or other PR agencies in the international realm. They're, they're leading people around like sheep with certain you kinds see, of fears and so forth. You're talking of state terrorism. If you compare the statements being from last one week statements of President of Pakistan and the Prime Minister of India, and you compare them, you will find out who is the terrorist. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vajpayee even today, Prime Minister of India, yes. he said, I will change the shape of Pakistan. What does he mean and by that? By that, he says that uh, Pakistan should learn a lesson from Afghanistan, and like we have done in Afghanistan, or like what has the United come States has done in, done in Afghanistan. Bring on the B-52s. Exactly, something? and mm -hmm. we will do it to Pakistan. Uh -huh. When you use this kind of... Have, this kind of have they done that? In the wars that you fought, have there, maybe you can share with us, and we want to get also to the terms of engagement. You have nuclear weapons, which yes. is very, very concerning and so forth. But uh, in the past, have there been bombardments of the city? What has been the course of the wars? You're familiar even personally right. and so forth. I haven't fought in them. The course of the war of exchange of conventional weapons between the two countries. Have the major cities been bombed? What was the course of those wars? What well, form in, did in they 1965, take? Or was it done up in the frontier provinces or what? No, in 1965, major cities were bombed. Lahore's Lahore was bombed. 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 Sialkot was bombed. Heavily Sar bombed. Heavily bombed. Sargoda was bombed. Uh, in '71, of course, the main uh, object was to separate Bangladesh. So yeah. it was more of the operation was in Bangladesh. But of course, at that time also, we had uh, a little bit of bombardment in Lahore and Sialkot. Those are the border areas, yeah. big cities that we have. Mm -hmm. And even Karachi was bombed. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we had very serious, but the point is, you know, yeah. now, now, now Pakistan army is also very heavily equipped. Mm -hmm, See, mm -hmm. that, that is our concern. Both, is both countries are, both not only are. with atomic weapons, but also with conventional weapons. And, 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 and a huge percentage in both cases of your income or of your national 
uh, economic is, going is to given to defense. war necessarily rather than going to education and things that might exactly. be able to help, which in both cases is direly needed. That's right. Yeah, huge. 60, 70 percent? More than that. More than that. More than that. In both cases? In both cases. Of the budget? I would say, about, for I would say about 80, 85 percent. 80, 85 percent of the budget of is both Pakistan and India, India, would you submit? Yes. Is, sub is to military? Military, yes. Yeah, and there's probably there's a lot of that contracting goes on with the United States military uh, arms producers, right? Right. Yeah. Right. That's staggering. Yes. Now, you've had this war experience with them. There must be lingering disquiet between them and so forth. What are the rules of engagement, or as you understand it, on both sides in terms of what uh, would possibly, could possibly trigger the tactical use of nuclear weapons? Well, Pakistan being a small country, mm -hmm. 150 in, in comparison million, to India, of course. Over a billion. And uh, Pakistan is a proud nation and they, they they have to safeguard their security they have learned the once they were hurt in 1971 mm -hmm. and this time i'm afraid uh, for their own defense and security they'll go to any extent if they have to mm -hmm. and which is not a good thing now you're talking you're talking not you're not in the government or anything like you're no, talking not, as a citizen, my that sort of thing but i mean there was great destruction delivered down on your cities and so forth yes. civilian loss in those yes. wars that you fought yes. there's a great amount of uh, of conventional weaponry on both sides and yes. so forth is there ability to attack delhi from uh, missiles or oh yes there could be, did delhi receive fire in the war or was no, it fought no, 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 missile, Pakistan? missile has is, not is, india, so uh, is india the overwhelming superpower in that i uh, certainly they, they want to be a, a regional superpower are they are they able to dictate to Pakistan and rain down as we were? We fought in Afghanistan and there was uh, it was B-52s bombing you know rifles. You know there was no comparison or something. What's the what's the basis at the conventional level between the two countries? Well, as you in India India is portraying itself as a, as as an America of that area, mm -hmm. a superpower that yeah. area. They want to be that. They want to be that. Expansive. Uh, um, yes. Perhaps, yeah. They, they want to be that. China is aware of that. China is aware of that. Uh, but the point is, uh, India is uh, is not stranger to us. We, we have, as I said, we had fought four wars with India. Yeah. And we have our plus points towards us also. But the point is, we're not here to to create, to sponsor a conflict. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. Yeah. We want to resolve this by peaceful means. Well, that's uh, the world wants us all. To want you to too. Exactly. Yeah. And, and whatever disputes we have, I mean, we have offered always that any intermediation, America, Russia, any country, anywhere, mm -hmm. we are ready to talk. Well, we're out of time. I'm sorry. Thanks. You just got started. Big subject. There should be more topic. We'll come back next week. This is Shane Butt, director of the uh, Kashmir Center USA here in New York City. The telephone number you can reach me if you want more information. We invite you to tune in next week. And Shaheen, thank you really very much. And all the best in that part of the world. It's, it's a very important area that should be very carefully uh, paid attention to by one and all because it's a very important and thank you for sharing some of Mr. Chen, I appreciate it, and I thank you very much. My pleasure. Until next time, we'll see you next week. Oh, you just get started. There's so much, you know. But uh, I'm really worried about that. I miss you must be, too. Yeah. You're in touch with people at home and something? Yes. There must be a sense I of worry there. I talked to my mother there. last night. You talked to whom? I'm a mother, I talked yeah. to my mother last night, and I said people She's are in moving. Lahore? She's in Lahore. Yeah. People are moving from uh, border areas towards cities. Yeah, that's what I see. Yes. And it's very worrying. And uh, if they start raining down with impunity bombs on Lahore or something at some point, there's, if you got that power. You see, there's a school of thought which I don't want to say on, on record. Oh, then don't, because it may be on. Okay. Hmm. But. Uh,